and forum and would like to talk about how shrinking civic space is affecting our women within the country. Very good morning, Ruth Asimwe Kabogo. Thank you for joining us on Morning at NTV. Sure. Thank you too for having me. Indeed. So let's get into it. What is the layman's understanding of civic space, in your opinion? Okay, so in the layman's understanding of civic space is really about uh, organizing. Mm. It's about can people be able to organize? Can mm. they be able to communicate with each other? Mm. Can they be able to, to, you know, meet and talk without uh, undue influence of government? Mm. And uh, maybe to give it a furthermore explanation, I'll, mm. I'll use uh, examples oh, yeah. around uh, maybe can we have a community dialogue? Mm. In uh, Maybe the LC1 chairperson has run away with community funds. Can people meet and talk about? Mm -hmm. It's about uh, media, you know, you, the journalists have, are being chased away, can they be able to maybe kind of run their stories? Mm -hmm. If we talk about students, for example, if there's an issue on school fees, can the students be able to come up and talk, you know what, this fees is too much, we, it needs to be reduced without really the authorities coming down and suspending them. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, if you're on your stage at the border border, can you be able to have a normal conversation mm -hmm. amongst yourself? Mm. without fear that you know there's someone among us who will report you mm. it's about me coming here and mm. being able to talk without fearing that maybe immediately I, I speak of something mm. the drone will be able to take me away mm. so civic space is, is all about that being able to organize uh, talk without fear without uh, undue influence of government uh, if we talk about NGOs can we be able to do advocacy work can we be able to talk about human rights without being closed mm. and suspended so for me that is, is really the layman's understanding. And indeed you did talk about the NGOs and in August of last year, 54 of which was shut down. So yes. very far, but could we say the civic space has been shrinking? E exactly. Mm -hmm. it, it has been shrinking. I can say that uh, Youth Line Forum is mm -hmm. among the organizations that were shut down. Wow. And, uh, and I think uh, for, for us really, it's about the fact that mm -hmm. uh, we are working with young people and uh, the government that we have in place right now is very scared of young people. Mm -hmm. They got into power when they were young. So mm -hmm they know the power that young people have. Mm. So when you start bringing young people together and you tell them, you know what, let's organize. Mm. Let's uh, re get back our space. Uh, if you go to Makere right now, we used to have the Freedom Square. But Indeed. Freedom Square is not there anymore. Mm. You can't go to Freedom Square and have a conversation. Mm. There used to be City Square where people just go and maybe talk or even meet, but although those spaces are closed. So when we get young Constitutional people Constitutional Square here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when, there's um, always police. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's always police. So when um, I, I, again, back to Youth mm. Line Forum. So when we get young people and tell them, do you know what, as young people we need to do this, uh, the government will come full force on you and, and you know, they will not want you to, to really get the young people together and organize. So as an institution, mm. we're among those that were closed. And I just want to say that along the way, the government has actually opened up 22 of the 54 closed Are you part of those NGOs no. that were opened up? Uh, no. So that's why the viewer <laughs> is actually scratching his or her head right now. They are wondering, uh, if you were shut down, how come you are uh, coming on to Morning at 10 TV in the capacity of uh, the director partnerships at Youth Line Forum? Yes, that's what I used to do, director <laughs> partnerships at Youth Line Forum. Aren't you in trouble uh, now? I'm, I'm a citizen. So I'm you're still active. They, you you were citizen. shut down, but the organization is still active. That's no, what you're telling us right now. No, the organization is shut down. Hmm. Um, that means it's not uh, active anymore. Hmm. I am uh, always to be director of partnerships at Youth Line Forum. Right. And uh, currently, I, I'm just a citizen. I'm hmm. just here to talk about uh, about space so and, um, so so youth line forum is not expediting any activities since august no Hmm. It's not. All right. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. But 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 yes. Really. So when hmm. we talk about a uh, civic space, those are the issues we are talking hmm. about. And uh, really, beyond the closing of Youth Line Forum and the other 54 organisations, we can also look at um, other organisations that have been able to speak out. Hmm. And and you know, they have been. Uh, let's out. begin with Youth Line Forum and what you were engaged in, because the viewer now is asking his or him or herself, why were you shut down? Yes, so uh, at uh, mm. Youth Line uh, Forum, we used to do trainings for university students. Oh. And it was really about grooming well, it's young... It's not politics mm. at all. Exactly. Mm. It was really about grooming young leaders. But like I mentioned, government is scared of, uh, of young people coming together. If you bring young people and tell them, you know what, leadership, we need to lead. We need to organize. We need to push back on, DG, on uh, you know, Facebook. We need to talk about OTT, the fuel prices. We need to talk about them. You get the border borders and the associations. And 
and you tell them, do you know what, you need to speak about this, you need to talk about incomes. We find the young people in the informal sector and, and we, we, we really need, we really used to, mm. to raise that consciousness and, and uh, I don't want to use the word incite anger, mm. but, but yes, that's the work we used to do. Mm. And, um, and, um, so you do empower these students to know what their rights are? What their rights are and be able to speak out and be able to push back really. When we go to the universities, there are policies which are there. Some of them are, are what I call bogus policies. We told them, you know what, you need to push back on this policy. Mm. So because we used to do that, uh, I think government was, was not happy. It, it, why happy. would a central government why. not want their students to be self-empowered, to know what their rights are, to know what the do's and don'ts are within their country, to know what they really are worth? Yes, so mm. we the, we all understand. What, what is the pushback all about, the, the according to your research? Mm. Yes, so the current uh, government, uh, I can't say, they, they know the power that young people have. They know that young people are mm. the majority. They know that young people have uh, have their have the ability to take control mm. and change the status quo in this country. They know that if young people come together and effectively organize, they can take over purpose. That's how when they took over mm. power, they were really young. Indeed. They were in the university. The were in that role, and and yeah, left, right, and yeah, center. Ev mm. Everywhere, even uh, across East Africa, all the presidents that we're having mm. today across Africa, all of them were were, yeah, were at the universities when they took over power. So they know that the Current students, with all that is around them, if they came together and started talking and started organizing, mm. they will be able to take over power from them. And they want to, to really stay close to that power what and hold on to what it. Would be so that is mm. the main reason. Asimwe, what would be some of the immediate ramifications that would culminate from a situation whereby a government doesn't want its students to know what their rights are or to exercise their rights or even to just push back against the government and ask for accountability? What would be the immediate ramifications of such a situation or status quo yes. where they do not have power to speak? So, so they, where the mm. students do not have power, it, it is uh, a sad situation because mm. even when you ask me that question, I, I try imagining it Indeed. and that is what is happening, uh, is, is there right now. Mm. It's, it's, really, it's really sad for the students when they are not able to push back, they are not able to talk. First of, first, of, first of all, they will remain docile and then also the kind of uh, services that they continue accessing are the, the, the normal, you know, the, the current uh, health services services mm. that we have and then you find that uh, there will be no development because development is really people and in this case when we're talking about development is people and the people are the students when the students do not cannot talk cannot push back so mm. you find that uh, ev everything goes back down issues if they cannot speak about education so we'll continue having the education scenario that we're facing mm. right now if they cannot talk about health, you'll find that people will continue, you know, dying, women continue dying for giving mm. birth. If they cannot talk about school fees, you'll find that uh, many of them will not graduate because they do not have the ability to pay, to mm. pay the fees. Mm. If they cannot talk about uh, online learning and all that, so as, as, a, as a country, mm. and in the long run, will not be able to develop mm. because our people, in this case who are students, are, are not really developing and are not really being empowered. And I'm really sure that the young people within this country come with a wealth of information they're too knowledgeable now if you're going to stop uh, stop them from speaking out that means they're going to sit on that knowledge they won't share some of the uh, tips that they have on how we can transform agriculture sure. how come we can transform the health sector exactly. the education yeah. sector exactly. so all this yeah. knowledge is going to be set on exactly. Wow so let's talk about um, the proactive strategy around civic space yes. and what role the students ought to be playing. Talk to me about that. Yes, so the proactive strategy really around civic space is that uh, people should be supported to kind of connect the dots. Mm. So the ordinary citizen should kind of understand that uh, when we're talking about civic space, we are really talking about them. So ordinary citizens, even students themselves, should be supported to connect the dots, should be supported to know that, do you know what, when we are not able to talk about fuel prices, at the end of the day, you're the one who's going to be buying a bar of soap at 10,000, mm -hmm. you're going to be buying, uh, do, do you know, um, cooking oil at 10,000, like generally, 
it will affect you. Uh, and it seems run. like the government officials are not even sure that these are connected. They're skyrocketing fuel e prices e exactly. in tandem with the f commodity prices going up. E exactly. So how do how do we help hmm. citizens to kind of uh, you know connect the dots? That should be a pro proactive strategy so that citizens know if I come as Ruth has said, when, and I'm talking about civic space, I'm actually talking about them. I'm talking about their access to markets. I'm talking hmm. about their livelihood. Hmm. I'm talking about their ability to have some kind of income. Indeed. I'm talking about their ability to lead. I'm mm. talking about them being able to hold their leaders accountable. Mm. So so just enabling citizens kind of uh, connect those dots so that at the end of the day, it is not me who mm. is talking about space and all that. It is the citizens themselves who are demanding, mm. who are out there speaking out. It's it's them who are, who are kind of having this dialogue with mm. government. But also, I think another strategy that we can be able mm. we can be able to use is is kind of run an ongoing campaign mm. eh? so 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 that at least we are always in the in the face of government an ongoing campaign that can also lead to dialogue with government and by this uh, if i give you an, an example really is that uh, we we had uh, the democratic governance facility mm. clause that is the DGF, fund. Indeed. yes so when 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 that fund closed it was supporting over 800 families those are like maybe staff members within organizations because mm. these are 54 organizations some of them government entities mm. so that clause is coming to a year that has not been open. Uh, when we look at uh, the 54 organizations, there are staff members mm. here, there are families that were being supported, there are young people that were really being uh, being reached mm. out to. And, 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 and you know, we, it's coming now to eight months. Mm. Like, like generally we came here, talked about it, and then went. Mm. So we need to kind of have of have that ca active campaign and said you know what keep on pushing pushing and then in the long run have dialogue with government mm. and uh, you know should be able to to sit down mm. with uh, with uh, someone cabinet or parliament tell them do you know what as institutions we are not the enemy mm. as citizens we are all supporting each other mm. this is our uganda we are here together mm. so how do we enable us work work together and you know develop our country mm. better so those are kind of strategies that we can think about and if those two do not work um, citizens connecting the dots and um, this the second one of, of maybe dialogue mm. does not work mm. I think uh, in the long run we might really need to incite citizens anger mm. because uh, there is a general understanding that Ugandans are not angry mm. yet so we have not yet reached at that space where we feel you know what do you really think <laughs> Ugandans <laughs> are not angry much. I see him, eh? not or are they fearful that when they come out and pick it the same fate that befell those who tried the same thing before them will actually yes be the same fit for them the fact that we've seen some people come out to pick it hmm? 54 died last year during the 2020 protests no, yes. you understand and I half of those know. or many of those were actually innocent people who are just moving about with their business uh, every time people come out they'll end up in jail yes, left exactly. right and center so could it be that people are angry they would like to come out and you know talk about uh, the ills within this country but then they are scared if we actually talk about this or even come out the iron fisted government is going to clamp down on us and we shall end up in jail knee deep in maya yes so it is both hmm. we we have had many of those and unfortunately the the young people i even we have, I, I know many young people are still in jail hmm. we have had the kidnappings we have had hmm. people but uh, also it has been a lot but uh, still I in my view or where I stand mm. we have not reached at that point where you know people feel that you know what uh, enough is enough mm. and we all come in unison mm. we have the middle class who are comfortable you know driving their cars fuels at 5160 and they're okay mm. and then we have uh, the the students are struggling where they are and so we have all these categories of people who do not have what I would call combined anger mm. so we've not reached to that step where we feel you know what a, a, enough enough mm. is enough we we need to take back not just really our space we need to take back our country we need to say no to this so the moment we reach to that stage and there are countries i do not want mm. to go there right. who have come to a space where they feel 
this is it and yeah. we all come together as mm. a collective really mm. as a collective and then we push back we mm. have not yet reached there we, we there is raising consciousness but mm. we've not reached at a point where we say this is too much a lot like you did mention um, some are comfortable some are not comfortable okay. so you're saying we have not reached that level I'm looking at a situation whereby we might never reach that level simply mm. because those who were too much power and could have done something to push back or even say something in the wake mm. of the uh, shrinking civic space are very much comfortable the elite True. like you said even if yeah. a bar of soap is 9,500 mm -hmm. as of yeah. Friday last week mm -hmm. they'll, they'll pay for it that's true. Even if a liter of oil moves away from seven all the way to nine thousand to ten thousand, twelve thousand, they will mm. pay for it. And they won't actually put up any protest and say, Oh, here is a banner. Museveni should go. Mm. Government should true. go. Something like that. So the the middle class, the elite, mm. if they are not going to get involved, we are not going to re to realize that projection that you just made. A yeah. situation whereby citizens rise up and they demand what rightfully belongs to them. Yeah, that that is uh, that is true. They are they are they are not <laughs> they are not yet there. Mm. But then also I I, re I remember the last week when the, when the fuel was at was at five two thousand. Mm. They actually started complaining. Mm. Some of them even parked their cars. Yeah, yeah. So yes, they are not there. But the majority are not really the el the elite, mm. as 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 we all know. Mm. The majority are us. Uh, the 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 young people in the communities that we that who women, do not the, wield power the, what who mm. we do not have that power mm. so as as who are the majority mm. as long as long as we we really need to all as a collective get to a place where like you know what this is enough mm. and then we need to push back then we can be able to do it but also if you forget the majority there is this saying saying that uh, by by Margaret Mead mm. it's uh, she says that it's only a small group mm. of committed people that can be able to change this world. So if we have that small group of committed within the majority who are tired of the status quo and there is an enabling environment to really support them and uh, I know and I believe we mm. can be able to get there. Okay this is what I heard before August before yes. these organizations were shut down. Many of these government officials were calling me and I was talking to them. This is was this was their concern. Many of them were saying Romeo we are seeing so many of these NGOs involved in politics. Mm -hmm. We are seeing we are seeing them fawning anger among the people. It's like they're trying to call for protests, a situation that will culminate into these uh, people who are protesting, burning down the country. And we are pretty much concerned. We are going to shut down these organizations, meaning mm -hmm. Morning Attend TV knew about the shutdown even before it happened. Oh, yes, they told us you were engaged too much in politics. And that's the reason as to why they were actually uh, adamant not to let you uh, continue with your activities. Mm -hmm. Anita Among came out recently and she actually reiterated that and she said NGOs should stay away from politics is this possible and why do you think government is adamant to let you as NGOs you know work in that sphere of politics accountability and governance yes I, I think that is really sad mm. for for government to think that NGOs are engaged in politics mm -hmm. it, it is sad and it's not true mm. that as NGOs are engaged in politics but uh, what we do as NGOs mm. and, and and really I will speak of what we used to, to do at, uh, at youth life for we really look at human rights mm. you know you, you need to have a right to education thank you we, we were registering uh, a friend of mine called which mm. was registering an, inst an organization the other day and uh, we just with the URSB and it had the word human rights on it and they told them do you know what we're not going to register if you're going to talk about human rights so really uh, yes this this is this is very this is very true so right now if you're just an organization human rights you cannot you, ca you cannot do that so that is how bad it has gone but government is just scared so as uh, NGOs when you're talking about governance and accountability and they will give a an example still layman's example of maybe we have the youth livelihood fund Mm. the women entrepreneurship fund mm. and um, you know government is, is going to elections and they bring them over and and you know all the all these funds so mm. what we do is really say fine if the youth livelihood fund is there can young people benefit from it if a government comes again and uh, people in government go again and take that fund it's not the young people that are benefiting it's the cousins and neighbors and all mm. that will come in and say no this is not right mm. and we come in and say we we 
we, we have rights. There is a right to education. Mm. There is a right to this. Mm. And we are telling people, citizens, enabling them to mm. understand some of this. If you're things. giving out relief funds of 100,000 and they go to your family members, uncles, saying girls, and you speak out, you, speak out, you so shouldn't be penalized. Exactly. Mm. So that's it's what not government, politics. Government, that's what government is scared mm. of. It's scared of us speaking out. And, uh, and, and I was really disappointed uh, sometime back when, when the president said that, you know what, these organizations are not doing anything. The next time they receive any fund, it has to be approved by cabinet. I was like, really? How scared is this government? And that has been approved. <laughs> they have to go it, through exactly. cabinet. The proposals will mm. go through cabinet. Mm. The ministers, cabinet ministers, will go and take a look at the proposals. Okay, human rights, mental health. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then they will send the list to parliament. To parliament, yes. So that parliament can <laughs> approve. And then parliament will decide, okay, how much money do we give you for this project? For this project. And Not uh, you deciding, <laughs> but parliament will have to exactly. decide because they have all your money now. Exactly. The funders are sending the money to parliament and then exactly. parliament gives you the NGOs the money. Exactly. Mm. Why and are they going through all this trouble? And if you're trouble? going to do mm. access to, to condoms and talk about that, they will be saying, oh, yeah, go ahead, service delivery, go ahead and mm. talk. But if they know that you're going to, you know, bring young people together, tell them, you know what, you have to take over power. We're like, do you know what, you're not getting this money. So it's, are they comfortable? having uh, an ignorant uh, young population that is not cognizant of what their rights are, that is not demanding accountability, those who are just sitting around drinking alcohol, doing nothing, looking for girls and engaging in shenanigans, is that the kind of group of young people that they want to see? Unproductive. <laughs> mm, yes and no. Mm. So yes, in the, in the, in the perspective of um, they, they want students who are docile, mm -hmm. they want students that they can control, they want students who are not angry for power, mm -hmm. they want students who will speak for them, they want um, students uh, who, who will, who will have like kind of looking out for them, so mm -hmm. they want a generation that will be, will be what? Docile. Mm -hmm. A generation that will not speak. A generation, they are raising that generation of, of you know, of young people who will not challenge them, mm -hmm. who will not tell them, do you know what, before you was born you were in power and, and up to now you're still there, you need to, you need to, to give that to give that back. So that one they do not want it. And they will do everything mm. within their power to make sure that students do not take, or this generation of young people, do not even take quarter of, of, what, they, of what they have. Mm. Because um, cause, cause even where, where, where we are heading, uh, where they are heading, or where the country is mm. heading in, in the times to come, and, and that is where they're holding on to that power. We, they do not need the young people to be able mm. to, to talk, speak out, and all that. But uh, I think I do not want to be all mm. negative. Maybe there, is a, there is also concern yes, for young one. people to, mm. to really have access to livelihood. Mm. And I think there are some uh, government uh, programs that are in place. I, young people are not benefiting the way they should be, but they're also making uh, making a way. If you look at their, the 10-point program of the government, so there is also provision mm. to ensure that maybe young people are accessing markets, having some income, but something that will not them make them comfortable enough to, yes. to, to start demanding. Uh, dear government, <laughs> when a young person comes out and says, we do not have access to the Youth Livelihood Fund, they're not playing politics. When they say that we do not have the national IDs to actually go and you know get involved in these national government programs, don't say it is your fault you didn't get a national ID. It is hard to attain one. I didn't have mm. to bribe any officer to get mine, but some people have different stories to tell. Okay. So when a young person comes out and says, it is actually suffocating us, it is strangling us, what do you do? Are you going to throw that young man in jail? Are you going to shut down that NGO just simply because they said the national ID is making it harder for these young people to engage in, in these programs so that they can sustain their livelihoods? It is still a big problem. It, is, it suffocated the yoga, it suffocated the Youth Livelihood Fund, and you, Uganda Women Entrepreneur, Entrepreneurship Program. Program. Many people mm. do not have national IDs. If you go to NIDA, it is a pain, it's, it's unless a pain. you ask somebody, and they know mm. that uh, you know this person is going to maybe make some noise over this. So they will not mm. maybe ask for money or anything, but other ordinary citizens are finding hard time accessing this very, very fruitful national ID. It is the key. Mm. It is the key to the access of any of these national programs. So indeed, the civic space is shrinking. But then, before we talk about the NGOs, how they can push back, the focal point is the students. How do they push back against the shrinking civic space? Yes. So the, 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 the students um, need to come together 
All right. And they need to realize that uh, when they go to the university, mm. beyond the courses that uh, they, mm. are, they are reading, because mm. most of them, as we see now, when they go, it's just about the course and nothing else. Mm. And, in, and by the end of the day, when they are graduating, they are, they are really, uh, the, the way they enter, they're not mm. doing much. So, so, so students need to, to come together mm. and organize and, and uh, be able, to, s be able to, to speak out. They need to know that even if they go and do that course, if other issues are not addressed, if the environment is not enabling for them, if, um, if you know, they need to be aware of everything else around them and how it connects to, to them uh, getting access to the education, connect together, and then have one voice that they can be able to speak about. And and I think also it's it's important to learn the environment where the students are operating. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, if you're at uh, Chambogo University and you speak the next day, you'll be suspended. So, so students are scared of that. I speak can be suspended. But there is what we are calling so soli solidarity. But the Constitution protects speak. freedom of speech. <laughs> <laughs> this document, which, which one too many times I'm like, when does it come out in full force <laughs> to protect the citizens of this country? Freedom of speech is enshrined within the Constitution. constitution. I speak in, on the campus and I'm let go or suspended. What does the Constitution say? That that is in hmm. writing. The, the freedom of speech is just it's just in it's just in writing. Hmm. It's not being it's, enforced. It's, it's, yes, we, we all know. You go out and speak the next day you're suspended. So we are looking at how can maybe students of another university mm -hmm. be able to speak on with on behalf of the issues of students with all you know, if Chambogo students cannot speak, right. maybe can we have um, a career university? students speak on their behalf. We saw that happen Can at some point. we have the Mountains of the Moon University students speak on behalf of Remember the, the Macquarie protests? University yes, we students. saw the Chambogo students, you know, try to, you know, come in and try to alleviate yeah. the situation. It was yes. good, you know, comradeship. Yes, I, th I think it's a, it's a good it's mm. a good strategy. It protects the students there so that they can be able to finish up. But then also it unites the students' movement, you know, because uh, the 1980s, 85, the students' movement was really vibrant because mm. the students, no matter the university, they used to speak on behalf of one another. So the students now, and, and right now we are there are so there are so many. Mm. So if they had that initiative where they're speaking on behalf of one another, they can be able to 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 really push back and attain something. And they know still, um, if you look at the University mm. Students Association, that is the the UNSA. It has been taken up by government. You know, government is overseeing that and overseeing uh, that. So that brings unduly influence on on you know it brings undue influence and it closes their space further if uh, government is in charge of a, of a students association so students again will be scared so mm. being mm. able to get other people to speak on your behalf mm. can can be helpful uh, well of course during those Macquarie protests the honorable minister of education Janet Katam Seveni came out and said it is the politicians who are funding those protests and uh, the flames that we did see at the time and she said the only you know solution or magic pill is to ensure that we remove politics political parties uh, from these mm. schools and also the issue of the funders what should be the end goal of the funders who are giving you money as NGOs what should be the end goal and what role do you see them playing yes, so mm. for the funders they if you're funding somebody to do something you mm. need to also come and be part of the conversation mm. and, and and really that is it they need to be part of the conversation I know that uh, when uh, organizations are closed you know some funders will really pull mm. out mm. they're like you know what if you're not registered we'll not work with you if you're not doing this we'll not work with you and then so they, they should they find also other have channels. some mm. other interests that they're yielding so there are some mm. conversations that they're not willing to be part of mm. so I think for the funders they need to come and be part Mm. of the conversations they can push on their part as citizens are pushing mm. as organizations are push, pushing so if we have multifaced uh, mm. conversations that are happening each in the other direction mm. we can be able to achieve something I as see. a collective Let, let's speak to the NGOs that were shut down and those that are self-censoring themselves self-censorship has taken center stage since they were shut down even even before 2016 and before that we've been seeing mm. NGOs self-censure themselves others being shut down accounts mm. being frozen you will need to remember all of that yeah. so how best can they push back so as uh, NGOs, hmm. I, th I think uh, throughout I'm talking about collective, 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 in, and, 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 and really that is it. Um, the, we've, I have been part of, of all that, hmm. where sometimes the other organizations account are closed and they like, do not reach to me and then it reaches to you. So we, we need to stay 
holding mm. each other's hands, what, what I would call, you know, stay united, put up a, a, a front. Mm. You know, if these organizations are closed, there should be other organizations who should be out there and mm. speaking and doing that kind mm -hmm. of work and doing advocacy, engaging with government, engaging with cabinet, engaging mm -hmm. with citizens. Mm. They continue mobilizing so that uh, we, s we keep that conversation alive. You know, when all those things happen, we come up and talk, and then after sometime two months, three months, mm. it doesn't even get sometimes to three months we, we we rest and you know we are like at the end of the the day we have done our job so we need to be co co kind of consistent mm. and mm. we need to keep our space mm. like fight for it be right. kind of consistent and keep on pushing back until we realize our please be consistent and keep pushing back the youth line forum is one of the NGOs <laughs> that was shut down but Asimwe is here and she's pushing back and she's speaking she's like no I won't be silent Asimwe what opportunities are there for us to leverage as a country with strengthened civic space it's really important a question to ask Mm. Mm. So the opportunities are in people. Mm. Uh, personally, I, I, be, I believe I believe in, in people. And people, citizens, the mm. women, the young people, mm. the university students, mm. that is where our opportunity lies. Thank you. Because with government, there is no opportunity there. Mm. But with young, with with the people, the citizens themselves. So citizens, if we are getting to a place where they are they are recognizing mm. and, they are and there is some kind of uh, consciousness and awareness. So that needs to kind of uh, be mm. encouraged. So if, if people connect the dots, mm. really understand that this is an issue that mm. concerns me. It's not about NGOs, it's not about, you know, it's about me, all, all of us, yes. So that's where our opportunity our opportunity mm. is and they all come together mm. and pu and unite really it doesn't matter whether you're the elite or the what like all of us eh? and this is why Uganda yeah. we need to fight for it mm. we need to get back to where we're supposed to be so that's where our opportunity lies if we can come together as people as citizens and push back as a collective Ruth Asimwe sure Kabogo we'll the former director if you will it. of partnerships at Youth <laughs> Line Forum which was also shut down down among the 54 NGOs in August of last year. Our only prayer is to have most of them, all of them, actually reopen so that they can go back to business and the environment to be conducive for them so that they can ably operate and actually, you know, improve service delivery for the ordinary citizens who are the voiceless. NMG shall continue being the mouthpiece for the voiceless. As Ruth Asimi, always seek out for NMG. We shall be here and ready to interact with you so that you disseminate all the information that you need. We won't actually shun you. We will only welcome you and many of you in the same sphere. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Thank you too. And of course, that is Ruth Asimwe, Kabogol, the director, partnerships at Youth Line Forum. That uh, conversation has been exhausted. Let's take a break. We'll be right back with our other conversation. Please keep it here on Morning Attend TV. You won't be disappointed. We'll be right back.